Hey guys, Miss Peterson here, and welcome to AP Physics 2, lecture 6-4, where we're going to be applying everything that we learned about refractions to lenses. Okay, so we're going to talk about converging and diverging lens, how to draw the ray diagrams, and how to solve it out mathematically. So we generally talk about two types of lenses. We have converging lenses, which are always going to be thicker in the middle. Okay, these will always be thicker in the middle. Okay. And they're called converging because hopefully you guys can see as I shine these light rays parallel to the thing, hopefully you can see how they are always bending toward the middle, okay? AKA they're converging. You can picture if all the rays hit parallel, they would all converge at that focal length. Now, uh, for converging lenses, they will always have positive focal lengths, okay? Um, oh, and you can notice those are the convex lenses. Yep. So convex or converging have a positive focal lengths, where diverging lenses okay, have negative focal lengths. We count their focal length as behind it. And a diverging lens is called that because hopefully, as you can see, the rays will diverge or bend away from the middle when they pass through the lens. Okay, for diverging, they are concave, which means that they will always be thinner in the middle. Now, one of the other sign conventions that we need to know is for object versus image distances. So, for object distance, It is wherever it is, okay? It is positive wherever the object is. So the object distance is always positive, okay? Now, for the image distance, okay, and that's SO. For the image distance, SI, okay, that will be positive if it's where you expect it. So on the opposite side of the lens. Okay, and yeah, that's how I remember it because lenses based are work based on refraction. So it's opposite the sign convention that we used for mirrors. Okay, negative will be if it's on the same side as the object. Okay, and also that matches up with the focal lengths. Okay, we always say that focal length is on um, is it behind the mirror or behind uh, the lens for a diverging ones where it's in front of it for a converging? So we need to be able to draw the ray diagrams. Um, the main ray diagrams that will be drawn, I'll first one do the one parallel to the principal axis that refracts through the focal point. And then we will also be doing, and I'll color code them a bit, uh, the incident rays that go through the focal point will reflect parallel. And then we can also do one that goes all the way through the vertex as another option. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and practice drawing some ray diagrams. I didn't draw the objects in here, so let's go ahead and draw in the objects. Okay. We're going to do one, start with a basic one, just in between F and 2F. We will do one with a far object beyond 2F or 2 times that focal length, a.k.a. the center of curvature. Um, and then one where it is in front of the focal length. Okay. So, note, I am going to be doing these with a ruler on a computer screen. So, we'll see how it goes. But I'll go ahead and do my first principal ray in blue. So for a converging lens, that is one that goes parallel and then refracts through the focal point. Okay. And then the second ray, which I will do in green, that is one that goes through the focal point and refracts parallel. 
So we can see that our image will form over here. And again, we could do the third option array, which just goes straight through the vertex, and it helps a little bit with that image location. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and do one at beyond 2F. We're going to do the same three rays. So first one goes parallel, refracts through that focal point. And then the other one goes through the focal point, the near focal point, and refracts parallel. And then to help with the image location, we can always do the third one going through the vertex. So we can see that our image will be in between F and 2F. And we should be describing these using that lost art. So location beyond uh, 2F, okay, it'll be inverted, it's orientation, L-O-S, it's size, it looks like it's going to be magnified. And we will check these in the optics bench after. Uh, and it's formed from converging rays, so it is real. Okay, this one will be between F and 2F. It is inverted. It is reduced. And it is real because it is formed from those converging rays. Okay, now let's go ahead and do the last one. This one's going to be a little bit harder. So, for our first ray... That one's not too hard. We go parallel and refract through that focal point. And then for our second ray, do you see why this might get confusing? Okay, how are we going to do it going through that focal point? So we're going to do it as if it came from that focal point. So I'm lining up my ruler with the focal point and the tip of the arrow, and then I am chasing it there. Okay. And it doesn't go perfect, which happens with these diagrams sometimes, so that's okay. I'm just going to go ahead and reflect it parallel there so we can see. Hmm, what do you notice? Those rays aren't going to converge. They're not going to meet and form a real object. So when that happens, what we do is we trace the reflect refracted waves, the refracted waves back. Okay, toward line of sight. Nope, not the rays that came from the object, the ones that went through the lens. So I'll go ahead and do that with a dashed line so you guys can see where that is. There's for that one and then for the blue one. There we go. And then I believe the vertex one will work here too. Okay, let me go ahead and try to get that set up. For that third line, there we go. Oops. And we can see where all those intersect. So in this one, that'll be a negative image. Okay, so a negative S image. All the other ones were positive. And if we are describing this image, okay, it is uh, on the other side. So on that same side as the mirror, same side as object. Okay, it is upright and magnified and virtual, okay? It is formed from diverging rays that our eyes just trace back. So that is a virtual image. And hopefully this matches with what you've seen in the physicsclassroom.com optics bench. Okay, recommend doing that activity first. Let's go ahead and try this for diverging lenses. Okay. So same for diverging. Incident ray parallel will refract as if it came from the near focal point. Incident ray from the far focal point will refract parallel to the principal axis. And a ray going, going through the vertex will continue along the same path. So we're going to do two of them here. I'm going to do one with a uh, close image. 
and one with a far image. Okay, we can see how those work out. So again, this is blue. So we start with parallel. And then it will refract as though it came from the near focal point. So what you're going to do is you're going to line up your ruler with the focal point and that point where it intersected the lens. Okay. And then you draw your line out from that in that diverging way. Okay. Diverging needs to go out. And then one that goes toward the far focal point. So I'm lining my ruler up with the tip of the arrow and the far focal point. Okay. This one was in blue. The second one will be in green. And the last one will be in red like all of them. So for this green one, it, line up your ruler as though it's going toward that far focal point. And then it refracts parallel. Okay. And we can see that these are diverging. So we're going to have to trace those back. Okay. And the blue one. Okay, again, I'm tracing back the refracted rays. And then we can always do the red line to kind of help us out. And we see that they all intersect right there to form that uh, image that's in front. Oh, that'll be a negative image distance. And this one is in front of F, the focal length. It is upright reduced, and virtual, okay? It's formed from those diverging rays tracing back, so it is a virtual image. Let's go ahead and try it here with this one. We do the incident ray going parallel and refracting as though it came from the near focal point. Okay. And I'm pretty confident we're going to have to trace it back. So I'm just going to do that as I draw them. Yep. And then the one that goes toward the far focal point. And then it refracts parallel. And then we can always do the red one just to help with our image location. And we got that intersection right there. So there's our little image. And it is going to have those same characteristics. We can even see this if we look real quick at the physicsclassroom.com optics bench simulation for a diverging lens. Okay. They only form those images that are in front of the focal length, reduced, and upright. Where for converging, we can see that relationship as we saw it in our um in our ray diagrams okay and they also have the three rays here so um their ray one is parallel refracting through that focal point ray two coming from the focal point refracting parallel and ray three the one through the vertex okay cool Okay, cool. So let's talk a little bit about how this works in your eye. Okay. Our eye um, has basically two. We have a lens and a cornea. They both act as lenses. And then we have muscles connected to the lens in our eye, which contract and expand to actually control the focal length of our eye. Okay. Well, it has a set focal length. And then based on, or no, it controls the focal length based on what we're looking at. It uses those distances and controls our focus so that we get the image formed directly on the back of our retina, which, fun fact, is actually inverted, um, but our brain just fixes that and flips it for us. Very convenient. So if you're nearsighted, okay, that means you have um, trouble seeing things far away, I believe, right? Yeah, nearsighted, trouble seeing far away. Okay. 
what that means is that when you have a like large um, object distance, okay, we have we put the equation on here yet? No. So uh, the equation for uh, lenses is the same as the ones for eyes. So it's one over f equals one over s image plus one over s object. And we always want S image to be directly on that retina, whatever that distance is. So when you have trouble seeing far away when S object is high, okay, that means that typically the image that it's forming is a little bit too close. Okay, you can't contract it all the way to bring that focal point closer. So if that's forming too close and those rays are converging too close, you fix it with a diverging lens. Where for farsightedness, okay, when you have trouble seeing close up, okay, that means that the... Um, Object distance typically is forming behind your retina, okay? So you need to converge it more. You fix it with a converging lens that helps the muscles that can't contract that much, help it contract and bring it into a little bit more focus. Okay, so let's go ahead and do some practice problems. An object of height 11 centimeters, okay, so H object equals 11 centimeters, is placed 44 centimeters in front of a converging lens, okay, so S object is 44 centimeters, with a focal length of 24 centimeters, locate and describe the image, okay, so just a general sense of what we have going on here, we have our converging lens, we have F at 24 so that means that 2F is going to be at 48, and we have our image somewhere in there. So since our image is between F and 2F, we can be pretty sure that the object okay, will be beyond 2F. It'll be inverted, magnified, and real. Okay, It should be inverted, magnified, and real, Okay, because we'll have the lenses go zoop. And zoop, I'll put the 24 there, and then we got zoop, and zoop, and it'll be somewhere over there. So if we wanted to, since we have the numbers, let's actually go and plug in. We have a converging lens, so that's a positive focal length and a positive image distance. So we can use our equation, 1 over F equals 1 over S object plus 1 over S image. So we have 1 over 24, since they're all in centimeters, we can stay all in centimeters, equals 1 over 44 plus 1 over S image. And we do the algebra, okay? Remember for the algebra, you got to subtract. So 1 over 24 minus 1 over 44, and then we take the inverse of that, 1 over that, to get an S image of 52.8 centimeters. And again, we expect it to be positive because it is behind that mirror on that positive side. We could even find the height of the image, okay? If you remember the magnification uh, equals height image over height object, which is equal to S image over S object. So if we want the height of the image, we can use height of the object times that ratio um, of the S image over S object. And... Therefore, we get, we have 11 times uh, 52.8 over 44. We expect it to be magnified, so that's good that that ratio was more than one. And we get height of our image of 13.2 centimeters. So yes, slightly magnified. Cool. Okay, cool. Let's go ahead and do one more. We have an object. Same object with a height of 11 centimeters. Okay, now its object distance is 48 centimeters in front of a diverging lens with a focal length of negative 24.5. How good of them for putting the negative sign on that um, and not making us know that diverging lenses have negative focal lengths. 
watch out for that. It can happen. Um, so the S object is in between. Uh, we know for all diverging lenses, for all diverging lenses, we tend to get those um, small reduced uh, virtual images. So they will be upright, reduced, and virtual. And then let's go ahead and do the math of it. Okay, we got 1 over negative 24.5 equals 1 over 48 plus 1 over S image. Are we expecting S image to be positive or negative? Negative. Okay, so then we do the math. We got 1 over negative 24.5 minus 1 over 48 gives us... Uh, negative 0 0.06165, whatever, equals 1 over S image. So then S image equals negative 16.2. That is in front of the focal length. It is negative, which is what we expect because it's on the same side as that object. Okay. And then if we wanted to do the height of the image, we could find that as well from 11 times that ratio of 16.2 over 48, we expect it to be smaller, and we get 3.71 centimeters. So yes, definitely reduced in height. And that's how we do lens problems. Okay, cool. Okay, cool.